Imagine you're an astronaut floating in the vast emptiness of space, surrounded by the breathtaking infinite cosmos. In a single moment, you feel your blood boiling from oxygen expanding in your veins while the extreme heat of the unfiltered sun starts cooking you alive. Wait, hang on, you have a spacesuit on. Instead of instant obliteration, you're actually safe and comfortable while enjoying the best view in the universe. But this begs the question, how does one small suit actually protect you from over 250 degrees of direct sun exposure? Even crazier, how does a suit perfectly match Earth's pressure to protect your blood from boiling? In this video, we're explaining the ingenious engineering solutions that remedy these issues and all of the other hidden secrets in the innovative space armor. So get ready to suit up. This is Engineering Insiders. Now let's get right into it. Our astronaut here is tasked with repairing a critical exterior component on the International Space Station that was damaged by space debris. We'll use this spacewalk mission to understand exactly how the extravehicular mobility unit, more commonly known as a spacesuit, protects astronauts from the many deadly hurdles involved with spacewalking. Now before she exits the station, our astronaut quickly suits up starting with the ever-important underlayers. This is an intricately designed combination of mesh spandex wrapped in 300 feet of water tubing that ultimately regulates body and suit temperature. This is necessary because there is no atmosphere in the void of space to lessen the exceptional power of the sun. Debatably more terrifying, in the absence of the sun, the temperature drops to an abysmal negative 250 degrees. The tubing in these underlayers come in direct contact with the astronaut's skin and can either source or sink heat, keeping our brave astronaut both alive and comfortable. But she has no time to worry about the details. There's a space station to fix. After putting on the rest of the suit, our astronaut hurries out of the space station's airlock, hooking into the only thing keeping her from floating into nothingness, a thin but strong synthetic fiber referred to as a safety tether. The view is breathtaking, but our astronaut has to stay focused on the mission. While attempting to maneuver to the damaged section of the space station, she's ambushed by space dust flying at the speed of a bullet. Although small, this dust travels so fast that it can easily shred through normal protective wear and do much more than that to humans. Thankfully, this extravehicular mobility unit is no normal piece of attire. With each suit priced around $150 million, they're ready for all types of action with a total of 11 outer shell layers five for temperature regulation, a fireproof layer, a waterproof layer, and a space dust stopping bulletproof layer, made of strong materials like Kevlar and Nextel. Now that another surely lethal encounter has been brushed off by the innovative mechanical and materials engineering of the outer shell layers, our astronaut is able to safely continue, while using the handrails on the space station to navigate towards the damaged area. She feels a little bit lightheaded the pressure in her suit seems to be a little low for her liking. She reaches for the control panel on her chest to turn a valve that increases the rate of oxygen pumped into the secondary pressure layer. This pumps more gas around her that presses into her body, or in other words, boosts the pressure to a more comfortable level. But if this is the secondary pressure system, what is the primary pressure system? The primary pressure is controlled by the greater life support system in the suit. This life support system uses sampling components to generate electrical signals proportional to the level of pressure. This signal goes to a central electrical brain in the suit known as a microprocessor, similar to the ones in your computer. Based on this pressure level, the processor instantly knows if it should increase or decrease the pressure to reach the optimum state for our astronaut. It then sends an output signal to the device that physically releases more or less gas keeping our astronaut safe from the perils of a pressureless suit. After all, if our astronaut was exposed to the lack of pressure in the space around her, the oxygen in her body would expand, making her blood boil and her lungs burst. Thankfully, this is yet another catastrophe conquered from the unique engineering of the EMU. This critical system was designed by electrical, power, mechanical, and embedded systems engineers and accomplishes more than just pressure regulation, but more on that later. Our astronaut is arriving at the critical zone. As she begins to clean and repair the damaged area, her handy helmet provides focused light to the point of interest while recording the entire operation for documentation purposes. She appends a few tools to her suit for easy access and settles in for the remainder of the five to eight hour excursion. Now, you might be thinking, five to eight hours is a long time. 
What if she gets thirsty or has to use the bathroom? Or more importantly, is there enough oxygen in her suit to support that? Great questions. And interestingly enough, there is a supply of water stored in the helmet that connects to a straw right below her face. So whenever she wants, she can just dip her chin and hydrate herself. As far as waste management goes, there is a maximum absorbency garment in the underlayers that efficiently absorbs liquid waste such as urine. As advanced as this spacesuit is, there is currently no solution for solid waste, as it poses unique issues with less priority than the current systems in the unit. So you could say, number two was not priority number one. <laughs> eh? Moving on to the oxygen supply, there is over seven hours worth of oxygen stored in the backpack otherwise known as the PLSS, Portable Life Support System. This PLSS not only contains the oxygen supply, but also the pressure systems we discussed earlier, carbon dioxide filters to relieve buildup, and a communication system. Speaking of the communication systems, it seems our astronaut is getting an important message on the communications headset in her helmet. Thankfully, the control panel on her chest has the ability to tune through frequencies to narrow in on the channel she's searching for. Uh-oh, it seems like Ground Control has identified another grouping of space debris headed right for the ISS. Her suit is strong, but they don't want to risk anything in this cutthroat environment. It's time to go. She quickly ensures all of her tools are in place and hurriedly starts the trek back to the entryway, while her heart starts to increase from the uncertainty of the situation. Amidst her rush, she turns over her shoulder to the bright sun glaring hard. While scrambling, she activates the sun visors on her helmet to get a better view and her heart skips a beat. The debris is coming right at her and closing in fast. She climbs even faster now and sees the hatch opening just a few rungs away. Finally, she flings herself into the airlock while rushing to move her tether to one in the airlock zone. She takes cover and after a few long seconds, hears a couple loud thuds hitting the station exterior very close to her. As she lets out a sigh of relief, she glances down to her oxygen supply gauge to find… Oh no, it's empty. But wait, she, she's still breathing. How is this possible? She's completely fine and the outer airlock doors haven't yet shut? Also, she should have another few hours of oxygen in the tank. What's going on? Our hero here could explain it. The last part of the suit we'll touch on is a redundancy system. This is basically an over-engineering of the suit, loading it with emergency precautions such as extra oxygen, temperature control, communication, and other life support functions. She makes a mental note to thank the engineers who designed this system as she heads through the second layer of airlock doors for debriefing. As she reconvenes with her crew, they discuss the seemingly impossible odds of both an unknown oxygen leak and a surprise space debris shower occurring on a single spacewalk. One thing they do know is that without the diverse team of innovative engineers that designed the many amazing features of the extravehicular mobility unit, the odds of survival would have been slim to none. Well, actually none. Zero chance of survival whatsoever. Now only one question remains. Who's going to go out on the next mission to repair the new damage? Would you suit up? As always, we hope you learned something here and if you did, please like and subscribe to help us create more great engineering content like this. Now check out this video to find out more about the engineers who made this suit. Thanks for watching and happy engineering everybody!